All right, this week we are talking about toy photography. So here's some examples of toy photography. This is probably something you have seen before. So most toy photographs have at least some of the following aspects. They will probably have shallow or poured up the field, which we have talked about. Um, they probably have something called forced perspective. They probably interact with the environment in some way. Most of them will tell a story. Successful ones will definitely tell a story. Um, they often mix different kinds of toys, and the more advanced ones will Photoshop out some of the supports that they use. So what is shallow depth of field or poor depth of field? That's what I've taught you. Um, using shallow or poor depth of field not only makes the toy stand out in a photo, but it also blurs out the background so it doesn't distract the viewer. So if you guys are using a camera, you're going to want to use the A slash AV setting and cho choose a lower f-stop. But most of you are going to use a phone. Um, on an iPhone, you can use the portrait mode to make a fake or sh uh, fake depth of field, poor depth of field. Um, Android users, I'm going to be real honest and say I'm an iPhone user and I'm not positive if your phones have something like this. But oftentimes, if you are photographing, whatever you're photographing, if you get real close to it, um, the background will often blur out on its own. So here's some examples of poured up the field or shallowed up the field. More um, excellent toy photographs. And you can look these people up if you want to see uh, more of their work. So telling a story here. Forced perspective. You can make a toy look huge by putting it very close to the camera. This is useful if you want, it, if you want to use it with normal sized people and large objects. So in this case, the photographer would be down on the ground with this little toy. The little toy would be very close to the photographer. And then you'd have something else normal size in the background. Again, um, Lego person with real people. You're going to want your toys to interact with the environment. So instead of having just your toy standing around doing nothing and being boring, have it interact with the environment in some way. Maybe pick an environment that matches the toy, and if you can't find an, a good environment, you can make one. So here, these toys, these Lego trucks and tractors are interacting with the background. There's real sticks here. Okay, you can play with water. Um, obviously, no crabs around us where we live, but you could certainly involve your pets if you choose to. Water. You can see a lot of these um, were probably created with a, with a regular SLR camera, but I get you guys only have your phones. Make it work. Try your best. I'm excited to see what you guys can come up with with just phones. So again, you can see some more setups here. This Buzz and Woody on the side. You can make an environment yourself. Um, you guys... I hope are familiar with the Nightmare Before Christmas. This is the the doctor from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, a nice little setup made with some foam core board. Again, these are like super advanced. You guys are going to do the best with what you got. This isn't going to be something that every one of you has access to. So tell a story. Have the toys interact with each other. What are they doing? What are they? What kind of scene are you setting? Um, they can interact with each other. They can interact with other objects, and props. Make up a story. Pretend it's a scene from a made-up movie. So um, these are teeny tiny little figures with a with a bumblebee that this photographer found. This is actually really hilarious. Okay, all sorts of good ones. <laughs> good ones that are telling a story. Scooby and Shaggy running away from a dinosaur. Great examples of telling a story here. So um, the link that you guys will see in this slideshow uh, links you to a whole wedding shot with Legos. So um, they tell a whole story with Lego people, um, complete with all of the like typical wedding photos that you would see um, if a friend or family member got married. Mix different kinds of toys together. So don't be afraid to mix unlikely photos together or um, toys together. So Rafiki and Simba here clearly doesn't belong with this other guy, which makes it kind of funny. Woody and Olaf, Woody and the Ninja Turtles. 
Woody visiting all of his favorite friends, apparently. And then lastly, um, this is an advanced thing that you guys do not have to attempt, but you can Photoshop out supports. So you can use string and wire to hold up toys or make them seem like they're floating in the air. Then use Photoshop, photop.com, or an app like, like Snapseed to remove the wires. I use Snapseed on my iPhone all the time. It is super duper easy to use, and you can use that to do some Photoshopping if you'd like. So um, this would be an example of Photoshop or photop.com, um, where they were kind of creating two images, getting rid of the wire and kind of stacking on top of each other. So your assignment, you're gonna choose, um, you're gonna create one, one toy photograph this time. One photo is all I'm asking for this week. Um, if you don't have any toys, you can easily cut out some eyes and a mouth um, from paper and tape them to something like a spoon. Uh, make your own forky. You could draw a face on an egg. Get creative. I do not want to hear anybody say that they do not have any toys. Um, think of things like Funko Pops. I know I have Funko Pops um, on my desk at school, on my desk here at home. Um, literally so many Funko Pops in my house. But um, there's all sorts of things you guys can use. Action figures, toys, um, dolls, siblings toys, you can take a Lego brick and draw some eyes on it. Um, think outside the box here. I don't want to hear any one of you say you don't have anything. You must tell a story. Do not just have the toys standing there doing nothing. Um, if you just, you know, take your little figure and stick them in the middle of the grass, that's not very interesting. What is your toy doing? Interaction is the key to good storytelling. Having toys interact with the background or each other will help you tell a story. Uh, the Photoshop techniques that I showed you very briefly are more advanced. Only do this if you feel comfortable with those tools. And if you're not having technical difficulties with Photoshop or Photopea, on your phone, you can use the free Snapseed app. I use it all the time. You click tools and then healing, and you can paint over the area that you want to remove. Um, on the Photoshop Express app, click on the Band-Aid icon on the bottom to use. Um, those are really easy apps that I think I've talked about before, um, especially with food photography. So um, you can use those apps for free to edit your photos if you choose. Okay, you do not need to do any more any of the advanced techniques if you do not want to. Um, there are some optional videos here that you guys can watch on your own uh, with some tips and tricks for. Um, for creating excellent toy photography here. Um, and as always, I don't have many of you guys re reach out for help, but I am available to help you guys if you need it. Just send me an email. I will happily get back to you. Uh, so a wrap up here. One good photograph that includes toys. It's got to tell a story. Make sure it's interesting. If you don't have toys, make something, put some eyes on something, use silverware, um, get creative guys and have lots of fun with this. Good luck.